diet is simple. Sheep and cows, for instance, live on grass, while cats love milk and dogs no bones. But for man, wheat alone is not enough. His food must be carefully selected for its vitamin content and hygienically prepared because his health and well-being are dependent on the science of food preparation. And whether we and our families eat in the privacy of our own homes, whether cooking is to our individual tastes, catering to our likes and dislikes, or in a cafe or some well-known hotel, we always expect the food to be scientifically prepared and to measure up to a certain standard whether it is Chinese or Italian. Although we know that the difference between eating at home or dining out means a greater variety of foods to choose from, as this young couple is finding out. But by far the most highly organized form of commercial cooking is that of a large public hospital where thousands of meals are prepared daily to suit the needs of hundreds of patients suffering from all types of complaints and illnesses. From the moment a patient enters the hospital, the diet is expertly planned. And the details of all food requirements are transferred to daily requisition cards upon which the kitchen organization is based. In all, over 3,000 meals are cooked daily for the 570 patients and 480 nurses and doctors. These meals, divided into four types of diet, are full, soft, semi-solid, and fluid. All prepared under the special supervision of the hospital dietitian. On the most modern equipment, whether it is a gas oven, or a gas-heated motor-driven rotary toaster, which cooks on both sides at once, 280 slices of toast per hour. In common with all commercial cooking, hospitals need speed, economy and flexibility, which are provided by such equipment as hot plates for grills, or huge steam pressure cookers used mainly for the root vegetables, fruit and white meat. Precision type of cooking, such as roasting and baking, heavy duty gas ovens are used. These ovens were specially designed and installed in this superb streamlined Australian hospital, where no expense or craftsmanship has been spared to tend the needs of the sick. After the food has been cooked, it is placed in food trolleys, which are plugged into a central bar and kept warm until ready to be taken by lift to the wards for serving. Only 10 minutes are needed to transport all food trolleys to their serveries. On reaching the servery, the trolleys are again used to keep the food warm while the trays are served by members of the nursing staff. And finally received by the patient for whose special needs all this organization has been designed. In vivid contrast, but not unlike a hospital, in its highly efficient management, is the modern method of feeding workers in great industries such as the new motor industry. Staff welfare is of prime importance here if production tempo is to be maintained. At this central canteen, speed, economy and flexibility are again essential if 400 odd workers per shift are to be served in seven minutes where enterprises of this size must plan to the last detail to ensure utmost efficiency. Able organization means increased output. For these men on the 7 a.m. to 3.20 p.m. shift have only 20 minutes for their lunch period. But the genius of smooth, capable management enables this General Motors canteen to feed 1,600 workers in an actual serving time of only 28 minutes. This miracle of achievement 
sees each unit of the kitchen equipment playing its part like cogs in a machine. The hot plate for grills with a special gas flame lighter to save the chef time. A six oven gas range which cooks rapidly and well. And finally, electrically warmed counters to keep the food at the correct temperature. A staff of 29 is all that is needed to give employees a choice of three different menus. Diners lining up under whichever one they prefer. A long call from canteen and hospital cooking is the specialized menu of which the Chinese is probably the best example with its fried rice, chow mein, chop suey, and a dozen other highly flavored dishes, all of which have been carefully prepared in readiness for your order. Whether it calls for chicken or turkey or celery, the Chinese with his chopper will be amazingly quick, just as he is in preparing that national favorite, dim sim. chicken omelette cooked on the age-old Chinese boiling table as rapidly as you're seeing it now. The secret of this speed lies the strength of the fire beneath the table. In the words of the Chinese, Plenty fire, welly good. In ancient times, wood. Today, gas. Like the Chinese, the Italians have a distinctive list of dishes, such as spaghetti, or soups like minestrone. But despite any popularity other national dishes have achieved, the bulk of our commercial cooking follows the English pattern of grills, roasts, or fish, either fried or grilled. Cafes rely on quickly cooked meals for their profit, so all equipment is geared to this purpose. In restaurants of this type, to give the necessary speed, gas is the sole fuel. All hotels, such as this well-known one, follow a general pattern in their cooking arrangements. Here, the heart of the kitchen is to be found in the big gas top range. Which cooks to perfection food like this. Chicken, in its many forms, is only one small item on a menu card. menu includes in a long list such favorites as oyster money. An entree of grilled whiting. Followed by the sumptuous and certainly more complicated chicken go wa. And if you're still hungry, sweet like strawberries and ice cream. Finished off by cheese and biscuits. Although a hotel does not make its own biscuits, 
They are truly another form of commercial cooking, but are served in canteens, cafes, homes, hospitals or hotels. Firstly, all the ingredients are mixed like this in a machine called the dough mixer. After thorough mixing has taken place, the dough leaves the mixer and proceeds to the breaking machine where it is rolled out. From there, it goes through the rollers where it is further reduced and concentrated. Then it moves to the cutting machine where the shape is stamped out and the maker's name and type of biscuit stamped on. It now passes into the ovens for baking. These ovens are 200 feet long. Throughout the process, the temperatures of the gas heated ovens are carefully watched and controlled. Finally, the biscuits emerge thoroughly cooked. The factory where these biscuits are being made has five huge ovens with a daily potential capacity of four tons, which is approximately two million biscuits a day. But whatever form commercial cooking takes, or whatever place, whether it is in the majesty of London, among the skyscrapers of New York, or in our own Australia. At any of our hotels, cafes, or restaurants, the one universal fuel which suits all requirements is that eternal flame, gas.